So I want to share with you one more story that he said. This story left such an impression on me. Over the years, in many of the books that I've written, I was zoichet to write a lot of Rabbi Wallstein's stories. I can't say them all today. But I'll share one more with you, and then perhaps in the future I'll share some, I'll share some more. Rabbi Wallerstein said over the following story, a powerful story. He said there was once a couple, and this couple, the wife was blind, and the husband, we'll call him Chaim, Chaim took care of his wife, Leah. He took care of her, Yoim and Velayla, took care of all her needs, she was blind, she couldn't do much, she couldn't take care of herself, so he took care of everything that she needed. She went, he went shopping for her. He cooked for her. He took her wherever he, she had to go. One day they're listening on the radio, and they hear news that they've just developed a very amazing, incredible concept that they're able to do an eye transplant that someone who wasn't able to see will now be given the gift of vision, of life, be able to see again. And when she heard that, there's a special doctor in Manhattan that can do such an operation, she said, we got to call Chaim, call him up, find out if we can get an appointment. And so he calls, and he tells his wife, I'm sorry, but they said there's over a five-year waiting list to get on, onto this doctor's list of transplants. She was so discouraged. So sad by the news, she says, Oy vey, come on, call again. And every week she tell him, cool, maybe this hope, maybe someone will cancel. I want to have the opportunity to see again. And finally, a few months pass by, and Chaim comes to his wife and says, you're not going to believe this, Leah, but I just got the news from the doctor, I called up. And they said, then you could come down for an appointment, something opened up. I don't believe it. I can't believe it. She was so happy. She said, great, let's go. They go together. And they come to the doctor's office for an examination. And she's told that she is a candidate to receive this eye transplant, giving her hope to see again. And sure enough, a few months later, the surgery is set. They come to the hospital and they begin the prep. And the husband comes over to his wife and says, I have to tell you something, I never told you this before. And no one told you this either. And that is that you're going to be surprised once you're able to see, you're going to be shocked to find out that I too am blind. And I never told you this. I didn't want you to be sad. I wanted you to realize that I could could take care of you and that's what I've been doing to the best of my abilities. But when you see me like that, please... Don't feel sad. Be happy. She says, okay. Surgery goes as planned. And a few days later, they remove the bandages from her eyes. And she starts to see colors. She starts to see little by little. First it's blurry. And then eventually, after a couple of days, she's able to see. And then her husband wishes her a mazel tov. And then she sees with her own eyes, she sees, oh, that indeed he's blind. The couple goes home, and now their roles switch. Whereas he was always taking care of her, now she was taking care of him. She went shopping for him. She made supper for him. She did everything. She drove him to shul each day and waited for him to come back. She was a great wife. But after doing this for a couple of months, she felt something inside wasn't right. He's holding me back. You know, I have opportunity now to see the world. I could go, I could go traveling. I could go shopping. I could go on trips, on planes, vacations. But my husband's holding me back. And after thinking about this, she was ungrateful. And after thinking about this for a while, one day she comes home to her husband and says, Chaim, I've been thinking about this for a long time. And she breaks him the news that she's thinking of getting a divorce. And Chaim is shocked. He's shocked. But he says, listen, if that's what you want to do, if that's the way you want to go, no problem. I respect your feelings. The next day she comes home, 
And she comes, and she says, Chaim! And he doesn't answer. She looks around, and he's gone. And all of his belongings are gone. He goes to his room, and sees that on her bed, there's a note. There's a heartbreaking note. And in the note, Chaim writes, Dear Leah, I'm so happy for you that you're able to see again. I'm so happy that you have eyes now to see the world and enjoy life. You know, it saddens me that you decided after all this time that all the years that I gave to you, I dedicated to you, I gave everything you wanted. I was the best husband I could be. I gave you whatever I could and now you're, you're dropping me like this. I could forgive you for that, but there's one thing that I can never forgive you for. And he says, you know, I, when I saw how much it meant to you to get the ability to see again, I said to myself, you know what? There's a five-year waiting list for an eye transplant. And you were so discouraged and depressed by that news. So I said to myself, you know what? What if? What if? I called up the doctor's office. And I said, listen, my wife really wants to see, to be able to see again. She wants that transplant. I'm able to see. Can I give my eyes to her? And she's reading these words. She's amazed by what she's reading. And she's crying. I want to be able to give my eyes to my wife. Can I do it? And the doctor said, technically, yeah, you could if you want to. And that's what I did, Leah. I said, you know what, I was able to see for real. And I said, you know what, I'm going to give my eyes to you. I'm going to give you my eyes so you can see. And I'm going to give the ultimate sacrifice for you because that's how much I loved you. And that's what I did. So I can forgive you for everything. But I can never forgive you for taking my eyes. Taking my eyes and then running away from me. Said Rabbi Wallace Hashem gives us on this Shama. He gives us Kaviyachal. He gives us his eyes. He gives the ability to see, to live life, to love life. And he gives us a Torah and mitzvah and a life to appreciate the gifts that he gives us to thank him every single day. And if we take those eyes, if we take that neshama, and we dirty it somehow, and we don't look at what we're supposed to be looking at, and we don't use our neshama properly, and we don't go in the ways of the Torah, then we're being ungrateful, just like that wife was. I don't know if that story is really true. I believe it's a mashal that Rabbi Wallstein was teaching us. But what a powerful lesson it is in life. Let's live life to its fullest, to its max. Realize what Hashem gave us. He gave us an neshama. He gave us life. He gave us a part of Him. What are we going to do with that life? We're going to live a life of Kiddush Hashem. That's what we're going to do. We're going to give it our all. We're going to be inspired to become greater. To become a little like Rabbi Wallerstein. A little bit. We can't really fill anyone's shoes. But a little bit. A little more passion in, in our Yiddish guy, in learning Torah, in Davening, and in Ahavas Yisroel, be a to Lerecha Kamoicha. If we use those eyes properly, we use our eyes to see the good, the Ayin Toiva, see the good in people, see the good in life, see the good of what it means to live a life of Torah and mitzvahs. We'll have a happy life. We'll be able to fulfill our Tafkit.